Hi, I'm Alice. And sadly, Greg is down with COVID this week. He's in the bedroom trying to take a little nap while I'm in charge of this week's video. So I hope you'll stay with me. I want to tell you a little bit about our story. Greg and I moved from Los Angeles to Mexico City last July. It's almost a year and we've been living in Coyoacan in this beautiful two bedroom, two bath apartment that we love. We love the colors. We love the decoration. The landlady had it all set up as an Airbnb and it was ready for us to make it a home, which we did. But now we're coming up on our one year lease and we've started to think about maybe getting our own unfurnished place and decorating ourselves, um, not decorating ourselves, but decorating the apartment ourselves. And uh, we're starting to look, even though I want to say again that we love Coyoacan and really love this apartment, but sometimes you just have to explore and see if there's something out there that can be even more exciting. So we want to bring you with us. We've been visiting different neighborhoods. Uh, before Greg came down with COVID, we already had started looking at different neighborhoods. And we want to give you a little tour about some of the places that we've considered in case you're looking for a place to move or even just a place to rent an Airbnb. We'll tell you a little bit about each neighborhood and um, then we'll circle back. Let's start with Coyoacan because we did look here too. Coyoacan is artsy and colorful. It has a suburban feel that we really like. It's a great place to take walks and just take in the colonial buildings. When Greg and I have nothing to do, we walk to the center of Coyoacan. We'll pick up some ice cream, which by the way, Coyoacan is kind of famous for. They have great flavors of fruits you probably never heard of. We'll grab our ice cream, walk over to the Coyotes fountain and sit down and just people watch. Roma. It's young and trendy, but it can be expensive. While we understand the appeal of Roma, it can be a little too much for us. There's a lot of bars and restaurants, so we actually come here often. The neighborhood probably has the best vegan options in the city. It's great if you're on vacation and you want to go to restaurants and bars often, this is the place to be. There's a lot going on. There's concerts and just cool stuff to do. So we're taking a second look at this area, but we also have a few reservations about it. It might just be a little too expensive and a little too raucous for us. Doctores. Doctores is sketchy, but fun and edgy too. Hi, I'm Alice. And I'm Greg. And today we're in the Doctores district of Mexico City and we're looking at... Casa Calypso. Our friend Carlitos, Boom Boom Kid, brought us here, and um, we're really glad he did. This is a good old-fashioned vinyl record store where you can get 45s and LPs, and uh, you can either purchase outright or do as our friend Carlitos is doing and doing some trades. They specialize in Latin American releases. So. Well, they have, I think they have a wide selection. I saw yeah. some really, really cool Asian records that I'm interested in buying, but... Unfortunately, we don't have a record player right now, but Yet. we're just looking and uh, planning ahead. Mm -hmm. Come along and take a look with us. Let's go dig through the crates. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> This is a funky little neighborhood with a bad reputation. I grew up in East LA, which also has a bad reputation, and I always loved living there. So I'm not scared, and I think Greg isn't scared either. Uh, we both enjoyed going to the record shop and looking around their flea market, and um, we like it. It's really well situated. It's actually right next to Roma. You just cross the street and Roma is there and the prices are a lot friendlier. <laughs> yeah. 
Centro Histórico. Well, this is the heart of the city. It's crowded, vibrant, historical. Everything is here. It's an exciting place to be. Uh, and a lot of our previous videos have bars, restaurants, and even an apartment tour that we did of this part of the city. So if you're curious about Centro Histórico, go back and watch some of those other videos. Uh, and we'll leave some examples of what type of apartment you can get in this area and how much it costs. Condesa. Condesa is kind of chill. It's got a similar vibe to Roma, but it's less congested. I think maybe we were a little harsh on this neighborhood at first. I think we thought it was going to be super bougie, but it's more relaxed, I think. Uh, it's, it's more relaxed than we originally thought. So we're going to look around here and see what's available in Condesa. Today we're in Colonia Nochebuena. Nochebuena is a colonia that we looked at when we were originally looking for an apartment. We settled on Coyoacan and it's a year later and now we're back looking at it again. And one of the things we're considering this time is how accessible public transportation is because uh, this is a beautiful neighborhood, lots of trees, lots of new development, but... Um, it's under a flight path. So it's you under can... a flight path. And uh, it may be better suited for somebody who has a car, <laughs> which we don't. Yeah, so we'll walk around again and take a look at this beautiful neighborhood, Colonia Nochebuena. Come along with us. So just walking through Nochebuena, we came across an apartment building that has rentals advertised outside, but it's really tall and Mexico City is in the ring of fire. We do have earthquakes now and then. I don't want to be in this tall building. Check it out. Good. One of the things we really like about Nochebuena is this beautiful park, Parque Hundido, the sunken park. It's in the center of Nochebuena and it's a very expansive park, beautiful place to relax. Um, but there are things about Noche Buena that we're not super excited about, like there is a flight path directly overhead. It seems like a fairly noisy neighborhood, um, so maybe not for us. Polanco. Polanco is sophisticated and cosmopolitan. It's a very nice, well-to-do area. Unfortunately, we're neither nice nor well-to-do, so this might not be the place for us, but we're happy to visit you if you can afford these prices. Here's the look at what you can get and for what price in Polanco. Juarez. This is an eclectic up and coming area. It has a lot of really cool old buildings that have been well maintained or restored. Unfortunately, this is a very small area, some very small colonia. So um, there's not a lot of turnover. There's not a lot of apartments that are available at any given time. So, so it might be a little bit more difficult to find that perfect apartment when you're ready to rent. But keep your eye on it. If you really want to live here, something will pop up eventually. Zona Rosa. This is the LGBTQ plus friendly neighborhood with a party vibe. Lots of restaurants, lots of bars, lots of clubs, lots of just there's a lot going on here. If you want to live at the party, this is a place to be. Super active place. Uh, I, I I hate to sound old, but yeah, I used to come here a lot when I was younger. Um, it is 
Probably a, not a place that Greg and I would want to live, although, again, we like to come here and hang out. Um, and it's definitely a great place to visit if you are in town just for a few days and you want to hang out here. That would be great. But it is a lot uh, for us, a lot of activity. So um, possibly not a good place for us to live. And the last place on our list is a place that we have just started um, really delving into. It's called San Rafael, and it's a quirky bohemian area with some rough edges. So when you first walk into San Rafael, you might think like, ooh, there's, you know, some graffiti on the wall. Some place, some of the buildings are not as um, well maintained as others, but... It's got some charm for sure. Um, those buildings are big, they're spacious, they're from another time, they're colonial. It, you know, it kind of has a little bit of that charm that New Orleans has because the buildings are old. But because they are, it also means that they might not be move-in ready. Now, this area is being gentrified. So some of the buildings have been restored, so you could find a good deal. But the really charming apartments are the ones that have not been restored. If you're moving here, it could mean a little extra work, restoring or fixing things. But the payoff is that you'd get a spacious apartment, um, and it, it's got a really cool vibe. So we're going to look in San Rafael, too. Well, that's it. We have looked at different apartments in different parts of town. There is a lot to choose from. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't videotape inside the apartments, but we'll post a few pictures from Viva Nuncios and Imuebles 24, some of the places that we looked up the original photos so that you can get an idea of how far your money can go in the different areas. If you are partial to one of the neighborhoods that we showed you, please let us know in the comments. If you have other suggestions, let us know. And uh, we'll let you know what we come up with next week or maybe in a couple of weeks. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully, Greg will be up and running soon. Please send him your get well wishes. So if you haven't subscribed, please do it now. Hit that notification bell so you know when we upload a new video. And... Give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. See you next week.